Capitalism is a very demanding system. It's also a system that places a lot of responsibility on the individual. Both left and right have become more entrenched in their collectivism, and the number of people defending capitalism is definitely shrinking. So one of the reasons why I love listening to your channel and listening to your comments such a staunch defender of capitalism and in this day and age i feel like that's becoming more and more important because i'm not sure if this is something that you've observed but when i look around at the current climate i see a lot of people who are veering away from the ideas of capitalism because maybe they're seeing some of the ills of culture and society and politics and and they're, they're looking at capitalism as maybe the problem in regards to this so do you think that people in the west are moving away from capitalism and, and if so why do you think that's happening Absolutely. I, I think that uh, the people who used to defend capitalism, people who we have, uh, have associated in the past with the kind of political right, uh, the left has always been anti-capitalist. Uh, the people in the political right have veered away from capitalism. Uh, they, they, they veered towards various forms of uh, statism, uh, primarily towards various forms of, uh, I call it economic fascism, uh, where, where the state controls. I, I, I think it's I think it, this has many reasons. I think partially it has to do with the fact that they associated the world in which we live today with capitalism and therefore they associate all the ills of capitalism, uh, all the ills of the world we have today with capitalism. Um, and uh, they also have misdiagnosed a lot of the problems. So uh, they, they blame globalization, they blame uh, uh, international trade for a lot of things that have nothing to do with globalization, international trade. So there's a lot of misdiagnosis. Uh, but then there's also the, the reality that capitalism is a, capitalism is a very demanding system. <laughs> it demands the best of individuals. It demands you to actually live up to your potential as a human being. It demands you to be rational and work hard and, and engage. And, and I think there's a lot of, the, the, there's a general movement in our culture that's anti-reason anti-rationality, emotionalist. Capitalism is also a system that places a lot of responsibility on the individual. Your life is yours. You've got to make whatever you make of it. it. Nobody else can do it for you. And there is a general move in our culture broadly towards collectivism. That is uh, towards negation of individualism and individual responsibility and the idea of collective responsibility, whatever that means. Uh, so both left and right have become more entrenched in their collectivism and more entrenched in the anti-reason view and the number of people defending capitalism even in its more you know moderate forms call it or, or even the partial capitalism that we have today that number is definitely shrinking and uh and and they seem to be getting less and less uh, visibility in the culture and everybody seems obsessed with the cultural issues uh, and uh, everybody, in a sense, takes for granted uh, the economics, and, and if anything, they take for granted the wealth, and therefore they're just more concerned about how the wealth is redistributed, not how the wealth is actually made. Correct, correct. So one of the big problems that I've seen over the recent years, and you look at the pandemic, um, people would look at that and they would say that there was big pharmaceutical companies that had a vested interest in promoting a a vaccine that wasn't necessarily healthy for people and that there is also uh, I think a very strong argument to be made that pharmaceutical companies have somewhat of a vested interest in uh, making people sick so that they're living off them for for the rest of their lives basically and this is just one example of I think that there are many different examples of companies that have vested interests in promoting an agenda that isn't necessarily beneficial for society and for the individual. So do you think that this is a byproduct of capitalism and, and how do we how do we fight this issue? No, I think the whole conception is insane. I mean, that would be like farmers have an interest in people being hungry. So let's create hunger so that we can sell them more food. Uh, I mean, that's ridiculous. Uh, pharmaceutical companies are competing. They're competing to try to make people healthier. And that competition results, the result of that competition is constant innovation in healthcare that makes us healthier. And the reality is that the vaccines were a massive boon uh, and saved a lot of lives, uh, it saved a huge number of lives uh, on, on a global scale. Now, there was a lot of misinformation. There was a lot of incompetence. And certainly by the political class and by our governments, particularly 
with regard to lockdowns, uh, you know, mandates, all kinds of mandates, uh, which are a clear violation of rights, and and uh, and and also, you know, all kind of uh, uh, guarantees that you know for for against liability that wouldn't exist in a in a truly capitalist economy. But to blame pharmaceuticals or business for this, I mean, is is uh, is ludicrous. Um, you know, look at look at what's uh, you know the 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 drug right now that's coming out uh, uh, that is dealing with obesity and and allowing people who are obese to lose uh, weight dramatically, and at the same time is uh, massively improving uh, improving heart disease. I mean, you would think that that drug would be suppressed by the pharmaceutical companies if they if they benefited from us being sick. I mean, it's just. I mean, why do we even have penicillin? We shouldn't have penicillin because we should want people to be sick so we can sell them, uh, you know, uh, magical formulas to try to, to try to cure them and make a lot of money off of it. I, I find the attack on the pharmaceutical industry of all the industries in the world the most ludicrous and in some ways the most unjust that I can think of. Uh, you know, life expectancy today is well into the 80s in most advanced countries and in, in unadvanced countries that is well into the 70s in, in third world countries, to a large extent because of pharmaceutical companies. You know, they've improved the quality of life, the length of life. Uh, you know, so many people are taking them. And and if you, if you take your pharmaceutical seriously, you can pretty much eliminate heart disease. Uh, you know, there's so many, the, the treatments, the new treatments that on a daily basis are being announced uh, to deal with cancer and, and the, the survivability from getting cancer is going way up. It, it's just a. It, it's just. It's just sad that this is again kind of the misinformation, perversion, and distortion. Competitive markets lead pharmaceuticals to come up with new drugs constantly that are improving human life. And when a drug is found not to do that, it it it, it does not make it on the market. If anything, the problem that we have today is too much regulation. The, uh, you know, an FDA that's way too powerful that it makes it way too expensive to bring drugs to market, and that actually uh, takes drugs off the market that have enormous benefits to some people, but might have some side effects to a few. Uh, so we have too few drugs, we have too, free, too few freedoms, and uh, it, I wish the pharmaceutical business was much freer, less regulated, uh, and and uh, freer to, to provide uh, a, a, even a wider variety of drugs and medicines for all of us. I think if we didn't have the amount of regulations we have today, I think it, it is not outrageous to think that life expectancy in the West could rise to 120 uh, within, a, within a couple of decades if, if you got rid of the regulations. I mean, the scientific breakthroughs are amazing. And stunningly, I know this is shocking, the pharmaceutical industry is 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 primarily composed of scientists who are trying to better human life. The idea that the pharmaceutical industry is is filled with megalomaniac, uh, you know, evil doers from James Bond movie, you know, conspiring to make people sick, is 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 bizarre at best. Okay, interesting. So, do you think that there is an an issue with crony capitalism in the West? And can you could you pinpoint any of those? Sure, there's lots of crony capitalism. There's crony capitalism all other places. There's, there's, uh, you know, there's probably not enough competition in the pharmaceutical industry because uh, the pharmaceutical companies probably lobby to have some regulations on themselves that keep out competitors. Because if you're big, then uh, you can deal with the regulations, and if you're small, you can't. Our financial industry is rife with regulations. Some of them uh, a result of cronyism. Uh, where financial institutions have lobbied in order to protect themselves. Uh, you know, the, the, there's cronyism pretty much in every industry. I mean, look at the tariffs that, uh, that Trump put in place and that Biden has kept in place. That is pure cronyism. In this case, it's cronyism by the unions. Don't forget unions are also crony actors. And it's cronyism by the steel manufacturers versus the attempted cronyism by others. So, yeah, I mean, there's a, a gazillion elements of cronyism in the marketplace, there's nothing unique about uh, about pharmaceuticals, and pharmaceuticals are, are nowhere near the worst of this. There's many, many industries that are worse. Steel manufacturers, for example, are much worse uh, than that. Look at the fact that in the United States right now, uh, the Japanese company, uh, Nippon, is trying to buy U.S. steel, and the Biden administration is going to try to stop them, and uh, Trump has said he would stop them. And uh, that's pure cronyism by unions and by 
an American steel company that would like to get a deal in U.S. steel and doesn't want to compete with the Japanese. So it's everywhere. But it, cronyism is not a result of capitalism. Wait, the more capitalism you have, the less cronyism there is. Cronyism is a result of statism. When the state is allowed to regulate, you've given the state power over business. Well, of course, business is going to try to a protect itself from the the attack by politicians, which is constant. And then once that happens, it's going to try to manipulate the rules to get in their favor. Well, of course, that's going to happen. The only cure for cronyism is to reduce the power of government over the economy, over business, to eliminate regulations, to get them out of the way. The fewer regulations, the, the less power uh, a government has over business, the less cronyism there is. The best story on this is, uh, uh, you know, the story of Microsoft in the mid 1990s. Microsoft at the time was the largest corporation in the world, right? It was very successful, incredibly successful. And, uh, uh, you know, it was invited to Congress it, it, it to, uh, uh, to in front of a committee in Congress uh, run by a Republican, not a Democrat, a Republican. And it had to explain why it didn't do any lobbying in Washington, because at the time, uh, Microsoft's budget for lobbying was zero. It had no offices in D.C., nothing. Right. And the chairman of this committee in Congress stood up and he started yelling at the Microsoft officials. You guys better start spending money in Washington, D.C. You need to lobby here. In other words, pad my pockets, please. Uh, you need to build the building here. You need to, you need to invest in Washington. And the, the people at Microsoft said, you know what? We, we don't need you guys, right? We're the biggest company in the world. You leave us alone. We will leave you alone. And they walked out, right? Six months later, the government comes knocking at Microsoft's door. We're here. Uh, 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 antitrust violation. You're offering a product for free. Bundling. Uh, we're going after you for offering a product for free, which consumers clearly benefit from. Uh, so what did Microsoft learn from that? They learned we better spend some money in Washington, D.C. We better lobby. So today, the lobbying budget of Microsoft is tens of millions of dollars. They have a beautiful building about equal distance from the White House and the Capitol Hill that is a Microsoft building. So, uh, you know, cronyism, there is no such thing as crony capitalism. Capitalism is the negation of cronyism. Cronyism is a phenomenon where government has power over business and where business fights back. And, and in fighting back, it protects its little it, its thing. But it's only made possible by giving power to government over business. Hmm. One of the other objections that we often hear about capitalism is that the nature of capitalism is that wealth disparities just become bigger and bigger as the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. So is the logical conclusion of capitalism a monopoly or a tyranny of monopolies? Well, there are two questions there, one regarding inequality and one regarding um, one regarding monopolies. So we'll take them both. Um First, with regard to wealthy distribution, uh, the poor do not get poorer under capitalism. That is bizarre, right? Indeed, capitalism is the only system in all of human history that has brought people out of poverty. Before capitalism, everybody was poor. 95, 96% of the human population on planet Earth was below uh, what the UN defines as extreme poverty. Today, because of capitalism, 100% because of capitalism, uh, only 8% of the world population is, and most of that is in Africa, is, uh, in, is considered extremely poor in, in extreme poverty. So, uh, no, capitalism is the only system in human history that has raised people out of poverty. Now, it is true that capitalism increases inequality. When people, um, when there's no capitalism, and, and you can look at Venezuela right now, you can look at North Korea, uh, you can look at, at pretty much any place in the world with no capitalism. Uh, what you have is relative equality. Everybody is poor. And if you want to be equal, cool. Everybody has to be poor. That's what equality generates. Hmm. So but what capitalism would, does yeah. is it makes everybody richer, but some people richer than others. So what? Who cares, right? If some people get richer than us. Indeed, the fact that some people get richer than us is, is what enables the poor to get richer. That is, it is the, the people who are speeding ahead in terms of inequality. They're the ones who are creating the wealth that helps the poor rise up from extreme poverty. So relative poverty is always there, 
but absolute poverty shrinks dramatically. If you enjoyed that reality-based podcast clip, make sure to subscribe to the reality-based YouTube channel. We'll be uploading many clips and the full podcast. And also, if you prefer the audible version, you can check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts at Reality Based.